Mikey Boy is back slanging jokes with the big slang shot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Mikey Annex Show episode 82. Oh, hell yeah, brother. I hope that you're doing well and I hope that you're having a great week. I'm thinking this episode I'm going to do a little bit of a recap of what is happening with my stand-up comedy career, if we can call it that way. Because, you know, I came back into it, you know, after... Uh, a big break, let's just put it that way, but I I didn't want to have a big break, but somebody else was like, listen, you're not going anywhere, handsome fella, you know what I'm saying, you're going to stay in your house, and you're going to go bonkers for about a year and something, so I did a few gigs <clears throat> when things reopened, you know, maybe like a few months ago, a few weeks ago, or whatever, so I was thinking like, you know, uh, let's do a, a bit of a recap so I can tell you a few stories, because, you know, I started filming my little vlogs, where I do, you know, the life of a stand-up comedian, check it on the YouTube channel if you haven't, but the videos are not out yet because I want to do a few so I can schedule them so I have one, you know, every week and all that stuff, so, but I'll give you a little behind the scenes, you know, I'll tell you what happened and all that stuff, and I think you'll be interesting, even interesting for you, even if you're not a stand-up comedy fan, you know, uh, you know me, I improvise and I talk a lot of shit, so I think you'll find it interesting, but, so anyway, so, <clears throat> I had my, you know, return after a very long time, so what happened was, you know, here, I'm here in the UK, and they closed us down first, you know, for 2020, but then they reopened us, you know, for a few months, for about maybe two months and a half, and I, or maybe two months, I'm not sure, and I banged out nine gigs, you know, which is quite good, because, you know, back then there was no gigs, because everything was still kind of shaky, you know, and I'm just, I'm rolling, bro, you know what I'm saying, I got my confidence back, I got my swagger back, I'm doing gigs, I'm like, yeah, man, I'm pushing out content, I'm doing the clips, and this, and I'm feeling good, and I was like, you know what, hell yeah, bro, let's do this, and then, you know, Bojo was like, uh, 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 don't get too excited, and then it was, I think, in December or in January or something, January 2021, and then he Bam! Locked us up again for five months, six months, four months. I don't even know how long, right? So he locked us up again, and then he reopened us. And I did only a few gigs since then because, you know, there's it's not that many so far. But it's been a bit of a shaky start, to be honest with you. And the thing is, like, with this whole podcast and this whole... I hate using that word, journey, but let me just do the air quotes, journey, you know what I'm saying, but I'm recording the whole journey, I want to show you everything, you know what I mean, and on this podcast, bro, if you've listened to this podcast, you know way too much personal information about me by this point, if you've been listening from the beginning, you know things about my family, you know what I like, you know what's my insecurities, what I'm afraid, what I dream of, and all the craziness that happens in my head, right? And this podcast, it's all about just capturing everything, the good, the bad, the, the the highs and the lows or whatever, you know. I'm not one of those people that be like, you know, hey, it's, everything is great, every gig is great, and I'm going to hide, you know, like the bad things that happen. Bro, I even have an episode from this podcast that is called My Worst Gigs Part 1, and I'm literally describing all the gigs, where they, where, how did they went, how much people and all that stuff. I need to do Part 2, actually. I think I still have the list somewhere with all my gigs and stuff, but fucking hell. So, <clears throat> so I was thinking like, you know what? I don't care. I don't. I genuinely don't care what people think about me. So, <laughs> you know, if some people think like, oh my god, he's a shit comedian and all that stuff. Yeah, I'm. I'm not that good. You know what I mean? When if you see me live, you'll be like, what the hell is this mayhem? What is happening over here? You know? So, anyway, my. Um, so I had my first gig back. You know, and it was my kryptonite city center of manchester i don't know why i genuinely don't know why if you look at my if I, when i look at my list okay i've gigged i've done 82 83 gigs so far right they would have been they would have been much more if it wasn't for the lockdown it is what it is bro you take it on the chin and you keep moving forward and anyway, so i've done maybe maybe 15 or 20 gigs and Manchester, and the funny thing is, half of those gigs, let's say 20 something, right, half of those gigs, 10, 11 gigs have been in city center of Manchester, but then the other half are like the outskirts or like little neighborhoods or little towns that are attached to Manchester, but they're not in the city center, and then all of those, all of those, with no exception, you know, the working class or whatever, I do great, when it comes to the city center, bro, I die on my ass. The most I can get 
is like a draw, which is a so-so gig, you know what I mean? All of them are red, you know, losses, because I have a ranking system, because of course I do, I'm a psycho, you know? I have a record like a boxer, you know? Wins, losses, draws, everything, right? And I was like, Jesus Christ, man, I don't know what it is. But when I get that young, hipstery crowd, oh, bro, <laughs> I die on my ass. They fucking hate me so much. The moment I step on stage, they fuck. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm too loud. Maybe too boisterous. I curse too much. Maybe I talk about tits too much. Whatever the hell it is. They fucking hate me, bro. But when I go to like working class or like middle-aged people, oh, bro, they love me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a spectacle, you know? <laughs> but the young people, I don't know why. They hate me, bro. When I see like a hipster crowd and I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to die on my ass. You know, but if I see people with track suits, I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm smashing this gig, you know. <laughs> fucking hell, you so fucking funny. You know what I mean? Like fucking scousers and shit. They love me in the working class and all that stuff, but hipsters, no. So first gig there, and I was like, oh, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, like, the first gig, the first few gigs coming back after a long layoff is very important, you know, for your confidence and stuff. And I was like, shit. Now, the problem is that that gig is run by literally probably one of my favorite peoples. They're, it's run by like, how many, two, three or four guys, I'm not sure. And those guys, I literally, I have like a little group in Manchester that I'm very close with and I hang out with. I'm not going to mention names and I'm going to give out, you know me, I don't mention names usually and I don't give out venues and stuff like that if it goes well because I don't want to... I don't want to reflect bad on the venue because it's not. It's a great gig. You know what I mean? I know so many people who have done it. The thing is, I die on it because I don't know how to do those rooms. I haven't learned yet. You know, I've seen other people before me, after me at that same lineup smashing it. Okay. So that's why if I give the venue, people are like, oh, I'm not going to go there. It's probably shit. No, when I'm there, it's shit. You know what I'm saying? When I'm on stage, it's shit. Anyway, the venue is great. And the organizers, they were one of my favorite people, you know what I'm saying? But And I'm, I'm always so happy to see them. But I know when I go, I'll die on my ass. And then I'll be like, ah, shit, they're not going to book me again. You know, I'm very self-conscious, you know, about stuff like that. I, I've, I'm like very... Uh, very hard on myself, you know, and I'll be like, oh, god damn, that, it's not, oh, I'll never do comedy again, probably everybody hates me, now everybody's gonna talk about me, how bad I am, every single time I do bad, I think about those stuff, right, and it, it's not good, but it's just how I am, right, and uh, <laughs> so I go there, right, it's <clears throat> warm as a motherfucker, First of all, it's during the summer. It was this summer, right? I go, bro, I'm sweating. And my dumb ass, listen to me. I took a wool, like a like a coat, jacket or whatever. And I'm thinking like it's very fashionable. It has like these Aztec, uh, Aztecs or whatever like pattern. It's like brown with like blue. It's very nice, you know? And I'm thinking like, you know what? I'm going to put a shirt. I'm going to put the coat on. And I'll be sexy on stage. Uh-uh, big mistake, okay? Don't try to be sexy while doing comedy. Usually never, usually never works unless you're crazy, crazy, crazy funny, you know, and you're very confident because you've been doing it for a f- for many years. Then you can get away with it. But if you're like a schmuck like me, open micer, don't try to be sexy. And I'm thinking like, you know, bro, I'm gonna be fucking sexy all day. You know, I got my new mustache and I'm gonna put my coat and I'll be like, hell yeah, dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be a cactus, isn't it? And um, but no, bro, I'm going there. I'm sweating, dude. So fucking hot. And I remember. I go to the venue, it's like on the second floor, I go upstairs, and I just walk into an empty room, you know, (laughs) and the gig is about to start in like 15 minutes, right, I turn around and I see all the comedians in one place, which is around 12 people, and I see, I turn on the other place, there's literally four people, audience, and I was like, oh yeah, welcome back to stand up, uh, to open my comedy, you know, because like, I guarantee you that the first week when things were reo- reopened and people were so thirsty for entertainment, I guarantee you the ho- doesn't matter if it's open mic, whatever, even if it's like the smallest gig, packed to the brim for the f- for one week because people are like, oh my god, I need to get out, I'm I'm going crazy in the house, right? But then after that week, week all of, of the effect just you know fizzled out. People are just like, nah, I'm going to shit, I'm not going to open mic. What's wrong with you, you know? And I was just like, oh, yeah, the good old days, you know. To be honest with you, one of my favorite times, one of my favorite gigs were gigs with four people in the audience. Because when there's so little people in the audience, it's, if I don't know, it feels like a family reunion, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, it's like you're doing jokes in front of your mates. You know, when you were young, you go to the park when you were a teenager or whatever. Back in Bulgaria, we used to do that all the time. You buy some beer, okay? Allegedly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't be a teenager and drink. But Bulgaria's crazy, bro. It was lawless. 
lawless place until 2007 before we went to the European Union. So you can do whatever the hell you want, bro. So we get, you know, like big plastic bottles of beer. We get some sunflower seeds, you know, semki, semichki. And, um, and we like there's like few people just sitting on the bench in the park because the weather's nice and you're drinking and, and you're having snacks or whatever and somebody is like the storyteller and yeah? like somebody just goes in front of everybody and he's like oh my god dude the other day i went to the bus this happened or uh, i met this girl or whatever you know what i'm saying like i saw a grandma falling over you know and a and a teeth stole her purse and then you know i started chasing him stuff like that you know just uh, average day in bulgaria you know, it's just crime and hot women everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Corrupt politicians and a bus who doesn't arrive on time. And yes, I said a bus because there's one bus in my city. You know, what is this? You have all the different buses? No, we have only one bus. Bus number one. Okay, that's it. Sometimes arrives, sometimes doesn't arrive. Sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe shit. Okay, that's it. You Average life. Then you go to the big store and you get secondhand clothes. Okay, you go inside the store. True story, by the way. There is a store called La Fiesta. It's in four floors. It's a massive store. You go inside and you can buy the second-hand clothes of all of these Americans and British peoples who didn't want those clothes. You go over there, you get a t-shirt, 7 XL. okay? You wear it, it's everything. It, it can be like a sleeping bag, it can be a dress, it can be everything, okay? Parachute, it's so big on me. No problem, I pay two pounds for it, okay? Then I go and it says, you know, it says... Mexico World Cup 86, okay, and I wear it, and I'm very happy, proud boy, all right, that's it, a true story, by the way, that is, that is an actual shop in Bulgaria, who massive, four floors, it's like a mall, and it all just used clothes from America, and they're massive, dude, so big, you want to hear about hustling, bro, you want to hear what, what it, you know what hustling is, you don't know what hustling is, son, let me, let me tell you something, back in the day when I used to do some online commerce in Bulgaria, Fuck yeah, dude. What I used to do is, you want to hear some real hustling? I used to go to the store because the clothes, what Americans do is they usually like, they buy shit, so much shit, sometimes they don't even wear it. So you'll find a shitloads of stuff with their tags on them, kind of brand new, barely worn, and everything's original, unlike in Bulgaria where everything is bootleg, you know, Louis Vuitton. No, you know what I'm saying? Like Louis Vuitton misspelled with two V's or whatever, you know? Like fucking everything. Gucci, Adidas. You go to the city center of my city, Plovdiv. This was back in the day before the European Union. I don't know how it is now, but you have the Adidas store. There's only one, the original store, you know? Everything is licensed. You go there, a truck suit, top and a bottom, costs, I don't know, 100. I'll, I'll put it into quid, okay? Or dollars, you know, 100 bucks, right? Costs 100 bucks. But then you go to the fucking the market, your local market or whatever, and you find the tracksuit Adidas, you know, it looks the same, 25, 30 bucks, you know what I mean? And it's fucking good. So everything is bootleg. That's never been an issue. So you go there, I go there, and what I do is I searched because everything's authentic. So I find basketball jerseys, right? Like authentic basketball NBA jerseys. I found Jordan t-shirts. I find shoes. I find like fucking, uh, you know, those champion uh they used to be very popular in the 90s, jackets, bomber jackets, everything you can imagine, and it's dirt cheap, I found one time, I remember it was like a Dallas Mavericks, or I think a 60, 76ers jersey, you know, like a retro jersey, uh, a replica, which replicas are like $140 in America, $135, right, very expensive, or a swingman or something like that was called, and I found it for like 8 bucks, or 6 bucks or whatever, I bought it, and then I sold it on eBay to an American, bro, for like, I think like 70 bucks or something. And I used to do that regularly. This is how I used to make a living back in Bulgaria. Like, I didn't have a job. Just hustling, you know, when I was a teenager. Just, I go there, I buy the shit from them. I take it and I resell them to them for shit loads more. You know what I'm saying? Because I bought it dirt cheap. Because the thing is, this is how it works. When the... When the stock arrives to the store, it's usually distributed and the prices is put up. They mostly like middle-aged women or grannies or, or, or like some uh, teenage girls or whatever. But it's mostly women. So when it comes to the... And, and I shop only for the male stuff. Because when it comes to the male stuff, they didn't know how to price it. So I saw, I used to have like a original Jordan uh, 
t-shirt from like his basketball days when he was uh, in college was it called North Carolina or South Carolina I'm not sure which Carolina was he from but uh, he played there uh cold or whatever the hell it's called original t-shirt and I bought it I I, I wore the fuck out of it I throw I throw it away throw it away years ago but I used to wear the fuck out of it and I bought it for like four quid or something I went online I didn't want to sell it I want to keep it for me online was like 40 bucks you know what I mean from America same shirt because they don't know how to value it because they're like oh, I'm just a t-shirt boom two two bucks you know but if it's like a female stuff because they know the brand they know what's what oh this dress is Gucci and they're all much more expensive guys stuff super cheap right so it's like what the fuck man you know and I used to do that all the time you know so that's called hustling ladies and gentlemen kids okay you might learn something from your uncle Mike I have no idea bro I used to be a savage man I don't give a fuck so about making the money when I was a teenager bro oh so greedy when I was a teenager I mean I'm a little bit more chilled out now but back then it's just like just make the money bro I don't give a fuck you know and um, anyway I even forgot what the hell was I talking about uh Oh yeah, about the gig. I don't know. I completely went off rails again. Um, so I go there and there's like literally four people. Yeah, the, one of my favorite gigs. There's no more comedy nights there. It's called the Flanagan's Apple. Okay, it's on Matthew Street in Liverpool. If you ever visit Liverpool, you have to go to Matthew Street. That is the place where it's all about the Beatles. So when they were starting out in Liverpool, these are all the clubs that they kind of perform that and half of these clubs are turned into museums that's how fucking crazy the Beatles and big were you know that's wild when you think about it right so they all started there anyway so it's an Irish pub but in the basement they have this room which is karaoke room so they have like this big stage they have microphones they have everything and a bar as well and the toilets are there and I remember one time I used to be there so it used to be I used to be there once a month, I think, because every week they had a comedy show. One of my mates was putting the comedy show on, but they had like nine comedians or ten comedians. And when it's a local pub on a Wednesday or whatever, you cannot have a gig a show like that fucking once a week. You're not going to have people. You do it maybe twice, uh, once every two weeks or once a month. Anyway, I performed there like eight times or something like that. Every single month I was there, right? Or sometimes even twice a month. It was my favorite place because s- me mates were organizing it. And then uh, this is the place where I met some of my closest mates in comedy. And this is the reason why I, st- I continued doing it. And I was doing it and this and that. And we hang out after the stuff and we just talk shit. It was amazing, right? One time we go in there. Gig starts at 8, right? We are literally like... I go there 20 to 8. Nobody, right? The comedians gather around. We're like nine or ten comedians or whatever. And we're sitting on the table. It's 15 past eight. There's not a single person in, in there except the bartender, right? And we're joking. Like, should we just do a show for the bartender? You know, like, what the hell? Anyway, and we're talking like, you know what? If nobody comes in the next ten minutes, let's fucking let's go to KFC. Let's have some drinks. Just catch up and just have like a night out or whatever. All the comedians and just have fun. Fuck it. And we're just all getting all stoked and all ready. And we were like, okay, man. It's like, we're counting down. I'm kind of excited. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. We're not going to perform. I'm in the, I'm in a different mindset now, you know? And the thing is, the toilets for the whole bar are downstairs. So when you open the door, you know, in front is the stage and all that stuff. But to the right is like the toilets. And, and a lot of the times when people came down, they came just for the toilets. And it's literally five minutes left until we pack our bags and go. And there's like two people coming in. And we kind of like turn around. They're like, oh my God, what's going to happen now? Are they here for the toilets? Are they here for the comedy? And they kind of stay, stay, stay. And they kind of like, is this where the comedy night is? And we're just like, hey. And we start clapping. You start clapping. Like, hey. And we're like, what's your names? And they're like, oh, John and and Sarah. And we're like, John and Sarah. John and Sarah. And we're fucking clapping and fucking stomping on the stuff. And they're like laughing. They're like, what the fuck's happening? And somebody screamed like well i guess we have a comedy show now you know and they said because you know if you didn't came you we wouldn't do a show if it wasn't for you guys right so these are like one of my fa- and we had the show and then two more people came but the the smallest amount of audience i'm not counting the comedians was two people that have ever done it too and it was some of the best gigs ever because when it's so small it's fun and you kind of make fun of like oh my god there's only two people in here and you get to talk to them and you can just do crowd work sometimes and if you can do well in front of four people yeah bro you 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 smash it when you have a room of 140 you know or 104 or whatever right it's much more easy there and it's good because you learn so it was kind of like such a tough room such a tough place to do 
I learned very quickly, you know, because it's always a few people and sometimes people are drunk because they from the bar upstairs, they come down, they're pissed, they talk, they heckle. It's it's crazy, right? It's like a jungle. So I love doing that. So that being said, you know, just because it's four people, it doesn't mean like, oh, I'm not doing this. I'm going home. You know, even though I've seen people like that, I'm not going to mention names, but I was like, hey, you don't do that, bro. Come on. Just because it's a few people, why are you going to be like, ah, oh, fuck these people, you're going to leave? Nah, bro, come on, give them a show, let's have some fun. I do this because it's fun, you know, and I want to learn it in progress. But I don't do it only because to be like, oh, my ego, look at me, I'm an artist. You know what I'm saying? I just go and just have fun and just learn how to do comedy in front of two people. Two, two, who gives a fuck, is better than zero, innit? So I go there and there's like fucking a few people, but I got to see all the comedians, even though it's so fucking hot, right? I'm now wearing the jacket, I'm like sweating and stuff, I saw all the comedians, all of a sudden, few minutes before we start a group because we're starting right the mc goes up and hello, hello a group of like five lads comes in and i'm like oh here we go and they look like rowdy they look like they're ready to laugh and they sit, sit on the front row right the five of them i'm in the second half and i'm like okay and i'm starting to observe them and i'm thinking about jokes in my mind because when it's such small room i'm like you know what? i'm gonna do like a few custom-made jokes and then probably go to material or whatever which that didn't happen but and I'm start, start thinking about jokes and oh you look like this, you look like that, you know, and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, we're rolling and they are laughing, the MC is doing very well, you know, uh, experienced comedian. And we were just like, okay, fuck, okay, th this looks good. Uh, I think it's like three acts. Three acts do their stuff, there's a break, and then the five lads just stood up and like, nice, thank you for having us guys, have a nice one, have a nice evening, we're leaving. And I was like, what the fuck, bro? And I'm outside. And I was just went outside. And I saw them. I was like, oh, you leaving? What are you doing? They were like, oh, we leaving, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, okay, fair enough. Then my time comes. I think I'm second or something, right? And at this point, it's literally one couple, right? Uh, on the side, at the back are all comedians. On the first table, you have a boy and a girl. And then you have two girls on another table. And at the back, you have like this one weird guy, but I, yeah, who's just there by himself. He said that he's like a comedian, but he was taking notes the whole time. And I was like, hmm, mm, this is a bit sketchy. Like, what's happening here? Are you like a Eastern European? Are you like a Western capitalist spy? What are you doing here? Is your name Peter? Mm? Are you, is your name Joseph? Or is your name Ivan? You know, I think he's spy. And I was like, oh, that's very suspicious. You know, like taking notes while being on a comedy show, that, that's, that's not good, man. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, okay, fair enough. Then I go on stage. Bro, let me tell you something. I died on my ass so badly. It was so bad. Like, literally so bad. The only laugh I got, okay, was, and you'll see it in the video, is midway, I just... I just said something, you know, like, oh, you're sitting there and you're having the time of your life. That is like a part of the bit. And then I kind of pause and I said, like I'm having now. This is amazing. You're great. Yeah. Twelve comedians and two people. Fuck yeah. And this was the and this is going on YouTube. This is the only thing that got a laugh. And even I said, oh, come on. This is the only thing that's going to get a fucking laugh. Right. And it's all frustrating because it's a set that I know that has it has worked. You know, I've done it so many times before. And I was like, I'm going to do something secure because, you know, like, it's my comeback and all that stuff, right? I don't want to go too crazy and risk everything, right, with brand new shit. But I probably should have done brand new shit because when you do brand new shit, you're not so tough on yourself because you're like, oh, it's a brand new gig, it's a brand new material. So, you know, if it doesn't work, you're still working on it. So you feel a bit more loose and you have nothing to lose. But when you go with a fucking bit that has been worked the previous 10 times, you have an expectation how it's going to be received and when you don't meet that expectation you're like oh damn man do i really suck or maybe like am i really funny and all that stuff you know oh dear so bad and i have a few bits a few interactions with the crowd they are part of the bit you know and it's kind of like little roasty pew, 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 you know towards the crowd I did the first one, nothing. I did the second, nothing. And I was like, oh my God, I think I picked the wrong people. And then I do some other stuff towards a, a, a wrong person as well. And it's going so bad, dude. And I'm in my head, but I'll tell you why. I'm actually very happy that the, this gig happened. Not because I just only saw my mates and I get out of the house and all that stuff. I have a problem, right? When, when I do well, I'm very energetic, you know, if you've never seen me perform but i'm very energetic and i feed off the crowd okay i'm always very confident i've never had issues with that but i kind of like expand 
when they give me, I like peacock, when they give me energy. But when they don't give me energy or when they're not laughing, I usually, my energy goes down. I kind of becomes like a shell, you know, like a little turtle. I put my head inside and I'm like, I don't want to play anymore. This is cold now. You know, my little pee pee goes inside me. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and it's like I've always had that issue, you know. And I was thinking like, you know what, I have to, when a gig is going bad, you can learn a lot, you know. And I was like, I need to, I, at the beginning, I, I saw that it's not going well. And I was like, I, I had a conscious mind. I was like, no, you're gonna, you have to keep the energy up and you have to be peacocking, okay. So I have this thing now. I really like to mess with people, you know, that, that's my thing. I love just mischief and just messing with people's head in a good way, you know. I don't want to be like, uh, ven- uh, like crazy or like drove people insane but it's just you know fuck with them in a good way meaning that i want to perform i want to give you everything i have you know what i mean like i'm i will try to perform to the best capabilities that i can right because comedy is like one of those things like it's not like weightlifting you know i was watching the other day like the olympics you go on there and if it's a crowd or no crowd like you know how much you can lift you know what i'm saying i cannot lift fucking 90 kilos or 100 kilos or whatever doesn't matter if there's a crowd there or no crowd there okay i mean obviously there's probably a little bit of difference you know when there's a crowd and stuff but at the back you know how much you can lift if you can lift 90 comfortably you're gonna lift it 10 out of nine times so the audience does your performance doesn't really depends on the audience but with comedy it's literally 50 50 it's like you may perform to the best of your ability, but if the crowd for whatever reason doesn't find it funny or maybe the previous comedian was something, something happened or maybe a big event just happened in that city or in that country or whatever, like a day before and you're talking about it or they don't like you, whatever it is, you're not going to get, you're going to get your 50%, but you're not going to get the other 50% to make the 100, right? That's the tricky part. That's why you can never master comedy and never figure out how to do it because every gig is for itself, you know? And I was like, I'm going to keep the energy up. So I want to give you the everything I have, okay? Everything I have. So when I tell you at the end, thank you guys, join the rest of the show, give you everything, I want to make you feel kind of like, man, I think like he gave us so much and I'm just sitting here being, a, you know what I mean, a fucking sour little bitch, you know what I mean? And I want to make you feel, to be like, man, I feel a little bit bad, you know? Because I've been in situations, you know, watching comedians and stuff, and they're like, man, they perform very well, you know? And maybe I didn't, because, you know, I'm in my head or I'm going over my material, and I'm like, fuck, I should have showed more support because that's really good, and he, she performed so fucking well, you know? So that's my goal. I want to make you feel like shit. <laughs> <laughs> some people come, some comedians want to make you feel happy and laughter. No, I want to make you feel guilty and bad, okay? That's my unique selling point. That's going to be an old leaflet. My mechanic, making you feel bad and miserable since 2019, okay? When I started comedy, mid-2019. Anyway, so, and I was like, I even addressed it. I was like, you know what? Because I was at the last bit, the last like few minutes, and I was like, okay, you're not giving me energy? Okay, I'm going to give you even more energy, Manchester, and I and I proper deliver it, and I, I played it, I did all the faces, the fucking movements, I'm sweating everything, you know, and then at the end, thank you guys, enjoy the rest of the show, and I'm lifting my stuff, and they're literally, they don't, they're just quiet, and somebody at the back, <laughs> slow clapping, <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, that's so bizarre, you know, and then I felt bad, you know, I kind of brushed it off, right after but then i felt so bad you know in the evening but it is what it is you know but then the next gig you know it's like a few days later i want to i want to tell you about because that gig was so fucking crazy and again everything is captured okay everything is captured you can see it on the youtube channel in the next few weeks they're gonna be popping up but i have previous ones so you can go and watch the previous ones and uh that gig so i'm gonna because i went i went better so i'm just gonna mention the venue right it was called the party pad you know, in Liverpool, and apparently that is the craziest pad I've ever seen, club or pub or whatever. Go, You go inside, and it's like so powerful, so much shit, crazy atmosphere everywhere, okay? Right in front is the fake taxi, 
Have you, if you've never seen the fake taxi, okay? Because I mentioned it to a few people. They was like, oh, fake taxi, what is this? And I was like, this is where birds get shagged. And when I say birds, I don't mean actual birds. You know what I'm saying? Because we probably have some American viewers and they're going to be thinking like, what the hell, what birds? No, no, this is how we call women for some bizarre reason in this country, birds. But this is the place where fit women get shagged at the, uh, at the back seat of a cab. Okay, and it's called fake taxi. It's very popular, right? The actual fake taxi. And I talked to one of the guys who knew what's happening and he said that there's a few of them you know and uh, this is one of them but it's authentic and the best part was there was a dent in the front you know what i'm saying and in the front there was a dent because there was a woman with her butt cheeks there and somebody was giving us tabbing i mean how can you not love this city you know what i'm saying liverpool is amazing right and inside there's like bumping cards there's like you know obviously not working but there's like mannequins body parts everywhere mannequins you know like covered mannequins spray painted sorry mannequins all over the place there's like signs there's like stickers posters insane shit right the disco lights crazy like a uh, like a stage for karaoke everything right and he told me that the guy who was like uh the fake taxi guy apparently there's two or three of them the actual actor you know he owns that place and i was like oh my fucking god i got so starstruck and he even told me who he was but because there were two people with the kind of similar description i didn't really know who exactly but i got very starstruck and i think because the gig was at the back room i did it there and i think that he that was the guy who he, i think he was actually in the room and i roasted him bro i'm so happy i should have went to him i didn't know if that was him but i should have went to him and be like i'm a, I'm a great fan i'm such a fan of your work man oh my god all the things you've done for me you know what i'm saying i've jerked it off so many times to your videos oh man i want to thank you so much you know what i'm saying and a massive piece by the way this guy has a fucking he's packing a hammer you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> these poor ladies getting fucking impaled over there he's like vlad the impaler you know what i'm saying over there with that meat hammer and uh, <laughs> so apparently he was the owner and uh it was a funky place man it was a funky place the back room we actually performed uh adam there was a motorboat that was the stage the stage was inside of a small two people motorboat with like fucking uh, like you can shag in there. It was like shaggy carpets and inside and fucking little pillows everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Used up condoms and shit. No, I'm only joking. But, you know, and uh, there was like this nice decoration everywhere. And the crowd was so fucking crazy, bro. Oh, my God. I'm preparing new material, right? I have 10 minutes and I have 6 minutes of all new material. And I'm thinking I'm going to go there and I'm preparing in my head. And I'm going to do this bit. Then I'm going to do that bit. Then I'm going to do this long bit. And there is this part and that part. Uh-uh, bro. They were so fucking crazy and pissed okay it's a s super small room so when you're on stage the people are literally in front of you okay there's like maybe 20 people inside low ceiling super small room so the the laughter has no place to go which is the perfect perfect thing small low ceilings are perfect for comedy shows you know and uh, just packed in there like sardines you know I go in there, the, the com I was in the second half, so the comedian before me, he did so well. But his style, he, quite often he does crowd work, because I've gigged with him before, and I've actually followed him a few times, and very difficult act to follow, you know. He's very good, and I'm like, oh fuck, he's crushing it, bro, he's destroying, right? And I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. And when, because he was just like, yeah, let me just do five minutes or something like that. And he was just like, okay, I think I need to go now. And the whole audience like, no, stay, no, we want more, we want more. And that is like, if you're following that, that is the worst thing that can happen. You know, it's either if the act performed so well or if, it, or if he, he, she, or whatever, performed so badly, that is like the worst thing that can happen. Because if the act has bombed you know performed so badly then you have to like the crowd is like mad and they're kind of like low energy and you have to lift them up but if they if if he's done so fucking good like that guy it's kind of like oh damn you gotta be better than him or at least at the same level if you come out there like fucking half and half uh, -uh they're gonna eat your life right and they're all screaming no but we want more please stay and i'm like jesus christ man what the fuck am i gonna do they introduced me and I, as I'm going, because there's like some steps and stuff, I'm kind of trying to balancing, bal balance myself. Midway, I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing any of the material. Like the set, I'll probably do some, but let's just start roasting them. And I go on stage and I was like, you want to be roasted? You want to be roasted? But the thing is, because it was my second gig, like 
my my i'm not as sharp you know i need to i need to gig more often because I, i'm not in the groove so kind of i even forgot one the word was lightweight one of the jokes was like that was the first word you look like her and then i'm not gonna spoil it but i was like hold on what's the word and i i literally take like three seconds you know which is a uh, age you know it's fucking ages and i was like oh oh what's the word and i see them they're just like waiting to for me for the punchline i was like ah oh, lightweight and then i said it you know and it went well and then i started i was throwing pillows at them it's fucking crazy there was like this old lady hackling the whole time i was making fun of her there was like some hot young chicks i said to the one like oh you look like you you're hot but you look like you have issues she lost her fucking shit <laughs> everybody was laughing i was roasting her you know when i finished the gig that's the thing i'm a, I'm a nice guy you know what i mean even though i'm a douchebag on stage or everything or on the podcast i say wow shit but i'm a nice guy i feel bad you know if i insult somebody so i went after after that and i was like oh sorry mate it's just you know just uh, she was still mad oh you're calling me i have issues but she, oh no fairness man she she was all fucking pissed and she half naked you know i was like well you do have issues you look like you have ones but it's okay it's not my place to judge you know i i apologize but she was still mad and then i needed to go to catch the bus but that was like a fun gig you know that was crazy and um i had the other one which is the other one it was a few days ago in the irish center yeah that was great you're gonna see a clip of that as well uh, i'm gonna tell you about this one in a future episode because i'm running out of time but that's about it, it's been a shaky start for good old mikey boy but i was like you know what let's do something different this episode let me just share what's happening uh, on on my end and that's about it ladies and gentlemen i hope that you enjoyed the show Hope that you find my insights, uh, not my insights, my uh, inside inside baseball, <laughs> like they say, interesting. And I'll see you next week at the Mike Yannick Show, next Wednesday or whenever you watch this. Okay, have a nice day. Bye. Bye.